All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday to everyone out there. Sunday, December 17th. We have a five-game NBA slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'll give you my lean on the spread. We'll give you my lean on the total. But all of my final plays, if you want to fade me, those plays are going to be in the pinned comment. Those are my favorite plays of the day. So if you do want to do the opposite and fade me, those plays, again, are going to be in the pinned comment. Or if you want to ride, those plays also in the pinned comment. Last night more x's and green on the screen here we went two and three the pistons and bucks under i mean the bucks scored 146 by themselves kind of like i said in yesterday's video probably not the best of spot but i didn't think the pistons would hang the heat minus four and a half they win by two and then the nets plus three and a half they lose by four so we lose on the hook there Cavs money line and clippers minus five and a half good picks there but again less green than there is red on that screen and it doesn't get any better when we look at the ride of the day Coming in from go after Black here. Luca under 54 and a half PRA. Luca has a great night. And our ride of the day streak comes to the uh, comes to an end. We had had four winners in a row. Now we're looking at an L here. But I'll tell you why I picked this one. This is a good spot. Was a good spot for Portland to kind of contain Luca. He didn't hit it last time they played. He'd only hit it in like one of his last seven games against Portland. Portland, one of the better perimeter defending teams in the league. But Luca goes monstrous. And I even said it on my X. Right, that's where we're posting the ride of the day each day. I said, hey. You know what? This is a tough, uh, you know, t tough pill to swallow if we're taking an under against one of the best players in the entire league. We did it. We went out there, and the streak now comes to an end. So, um, guys, if you do want to be the rider of the day or a chance to be the rider of the day and get us back in the win column for this section here, go ahead and use hashtag ride of the day in the comments. We need a dub. So throw something that you're confident in. I'll be picking one person's pick in the comments, tweeting it out, jumping on board with you, and then you guys get a shout out in the next video win or loss again head over and interact with that right of the day post over on twitter slash x at ev guy boss and i've been following everyone back as of late but let's go ahead and dive into game number one here we do have the celtics taking on the magic uh these two teams just played the celtics won 128 to 111 which was kind of an anomaly based on what we had seen in the last couple of years here the, the magic had beat the celtics so four of the last five games including that one that we just saw Miami had one, but this is a Celtics team that obviously when healthy is really good. But that's the question here. Is Porzingis going to play? Now, he missed last game, um, still was able to win, but he's probable in this game. So if he does end up playing, I do like the Celtics minus eight, especially when we flip over and look at some of the injuries on the Miami side of things, most notably Jalen Suggs, obviously a decent part of their team, right? Um, he's dealing with a left-hand injury, and he's questionable here. So regardless of him, I do like the eight number. I think the Celtics win this game by, you know, nine or more. Um, but, you know, you might want to get on this early-ish, I guess, because I could see this line moving. If Sugg gets ruled out, Porzingis gets ruled in, that's probably at least like a point and a half that may shift. Who knows? Um, I do like the Celtics minus the eight here. I would probably only play it up to like minus nine confidently, right? Like I, I don't know if, if this gets nine, I don't know if it stays uh, as, as confident in my brain as, as normal because I could see this. I could honestly see the Celtics winning this game by nine. In terms of a total, uh, this is one where I think, you know, the books have this pretty well pegged. 228. Um, the Celtics, you know, scored 128 last time. And when they are at home, this is a Celtics team that, you know, plays really comfortably, plays well at home. Um, they're the sixth best team defensively with field goal percentage when at home. The 11th best um, when it comes to scoring. So I think the Celtics are going to have to uh, sort of carry the scoring workload, which I don't think they'll have a problem doing um, if we do want to see 230-ish type points, right? So I'm going to hope that the Celtics carry the workload and the Magic just kind of tag along here. So I'll lean towards the over 228 in this spot. All right, next up, we have San Antonio taking on New Orleans. Don't look now, but the San Antonio Spurs are hot. They won one game um, for the first time in, what, like 18, whatever it was. Crazy amount of games. Uh, they win 129 to 115 a couple nights ago over the Lakers here. They're going off against, uh, going up against a team that's playing really good basketball as well, the Pelicans. Uh, they've won four, uh, four of their last five games here. A couple quality wins in there, but a couple layups as well. Um, but nonetheless, I've seen this at actually eight plus eight in terms of the, the home spread here on many books. I think this is moving up, which maybe makes a little bit of sense, right? Like, I don't think that Vegas is selling confident tickets here at minus seven or minus seven and a half. But as this line increases, I don't ultimately end up hating the Spurs, which I know kind of crazy here. I doubt it becomes a final play. Um, I don't think that we can confidently bet on the Spurs, but you do start to lose my confidence when we get towards, you know, seven 
eight and in, in that type of level in terms of of uh, the Pelicans here. Like the Pelicans, we bet on them a couple nights ago, right? Uh, uh, seven and a half point favorites against the Hornets. They win that game. They look like they're in the control of that whole game. They win the game by five, which is obviously you know uh, right near that seven and a half. But you know, close but no cigar doesn't count in sports betting. So I do think that this is a spot in which uh, we could start to wean ourselves off of the Pelicans altogether as this number gets higher. Which you know, so facto, I guess we end up looking at the Spurs plus the eight plus the eight and a half so yeah i'm gonna lean in that direction uh, the spurs like i said uh you might as well consider them red hot right now because they've won a game um but i think the main play in this one um is gonna be me taking a peek at this under 238 you might be like how are you gonna take an under here um with the spurs right the spurs are 16 and 8 to the over this season they're allowing the fifth most points in the entire league uh this year scoring the fifth fewest points in the entire league uh but what it's gonna come down to is the fact that one again i don't think the Spurs are going to score a bunch of points like they did last game. Again, they scored uh, 129 against the Lakers. Like, they've had a couple high-scoring games this season, but they're more or less pegged in the, I, I guess I would say, uh, 110 range, right? And I don't think New Orleans is out here going and, and scoring, you know, 130 today. Um, if you ask me, like, they're a very middle-of-the-road offense. So I'm going to take a peek at the under 238 here because, again, I don't think, even even though New Orleans is playing against this bad defense in the Spurs, I don't think that they changed their game um, or anything like that. This New Orleans offense is not built uh, to go and shoot a bunch of threes and score a bunch of points, right? Uh, they shoot the fi the fifth fewest threes per game. They make the tenth fewest, so it's not even like they're making the threes that they do take. And the 238 number here is a little bit high for me. So regardless of how bad the Spurs defense is, I think that this is a low-scoring game. It's probably my favorite play in this game. But again, by default, I kind of lean towards the Spurs as that spread gets bigger. All right, next up, we have the Bucks taking on the Rockets here. Bucks six and a half point favorites, which seems a little bit low to me, to be completely honest. The total sitting at 230. So Houston's coming off of a win against Memphis a, a couple nights back here. Milwaukee coming off of a huge win yesterday against Detroit. And you might be like, well, yeah, it's six and a half because that back-to-back. -back. The starters didn't play all that much for Milwaukee here. The starter that played the most was Damian Lillard, um, which he played 29-39. Um, but Giannis played 25 minutes. Like, I don't envision these guys being, you know, really uh, gassed after a game against Detroit. And you have a Milwaukee team that is one of the better teams um, in the league right now at home. Uh, in terms of uh, straight up record here, they're 13 and 2 against the spread at home. Um, uh, excuse me, 13 and 2 straight up at home against the spread. They're more in the 500 range, but they're starting to catch their stride, right? In terms of their recent home games, they're uh, 4 and 2, I believe, against the spread in their last six. Whereas Houston kind of struggling on the road this year. Now, this Houston team has proved me wrong and proved a crap load of people wrong plenty this season. They're 13 and 9 straight up. I don't know if people would, you know, anticipate that. And they're 16 and 5 and 1 against the spread this season um, in terms of just overall. But when you look at them from a road perspective it's not as as great it's more like they're a 500 team on the road so not playing as well on the road as they do at home I'm going to lean towards Milwaukee here, minus the six and a half points. This Houston team, obviously a good against the spread team, but I think Houston's kind of starting to catch their stride. Um, they beat Chicago by, I think that was a close game, but they win. They beat Chicago. They blow out Indiana. They blow out Detroit. They're starting to beat a lot of these teams um, up pretty bad, and they haven't played Houston this year, so um, it's not like Houston really knows how to beat them, or it's like, oh, it's hard to beat a team twice. No, no, no. I think that this is a game in, in which Milwaukee gets the job done. Six and a half points. I keep referencing it. It is a decently high number, I think, for, for Houston, but I think that we can roll with it. In terms of a spread pick here, I'm going to lean towards the over. Uh, Milwaukee hasn't had that great of a defense this entire season, um, and now they're on a back-to-back. -back. I think they could be at least that part of them. You know, their legs could be a little flimsy in, in terms of locking up. And then uh, Houston, you know, as good as this defense is, things do sort of flip when they are on the road. Uh, not as good of a team when they're on the road. Uh, so I think that I'm going to lean towards uh, what we're looking at here in terms of over 230. And again, it's kind of like what I talked about at the, the start of the show, right? Betting some teams like Milwaukee or the Pacers, these spots, it's like, can you even confidently take an under? I don't think so. But in terms of Houston here, you know, allowing the fewest points in the entire league this season, right? You flip it to their away games, they're right in the middle of the pack, allowing just one point under league average. So I'll lean towards the over 230. Next up, we have Phoenix taking on the Wizards. And as bad as the Wizards are... 
I think this spread like is super high, right? I've seen 13 on some sports books as well. So you can make the argument that the books know what they're doing and, and they're not afraid to lay this number, which that part should give you confidence in Phoenix. But just looking at this number, it just seems a little bit too high. Uh, now, that being said, Washington, as we know, like they're, they're well-deserving of this number. I just don't know if Phoenix is well-deserving of this number, if that makes sense. Uh, you can make the argument that they're definitely due for a win. Um, Bradley Beal is going to be out indefinitely now, which say what you want. I don't think that it's good for them long term, obviously, but it seems like when he comes into the lineup, they're kind of like, oh, who does what and whatnot. Now, when him being out, I don't think that, you know, that's necessarily a knock on Phoenix. You have um, obviously Durant and Book there, which when they play, I think that they play better. But again, this 12 and a half points seems a little bit too high. So if this were to be even a high spread of like eight and a half, right? Like a larger spread, I'd be on Phoenix. That 12 and a half seems like it's a little bit too high uh, for me to comfortably play. So I either stay away or look at Washington. But again, like some of these teams in the NBA right now, much like when we talked with Spurs, are we really going to put our hard earned cash on Washington? You know what I mean? Or on the Spurs like no you can lean that way and it kind of talks you out of maybe making a silly bet dropping you know 13 points with the Suns right like that could almost be a, a win just by not losing money on it um, but I just can't necessarily see myself making this one a final play I could see this being like a 126 to, to 120 type of a game right like it's 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 Phoenix has no trouble scoring uh, they're not the best of you know world beating defenses out there we know Washington's defense is absolutely god awful but Phoenix is just the middle of the pack defense defense here uh, so I could see this being a high scoring game uh, 244 and a half seems really high but again um, we're, we're looking at two defenses that aren't all that spectacular Washington allowing the most points in the entire league the second easiest team to score on when it comes to uh, field goal percentage as well uh, they are scoring a decent amount of points playing with some pace as well so I could see there being some points here I just don't like the 12 and a half or 13 on most sports books um, I could see this again being like a 126 to 120 or 126 to 118 there's something getting right around this number um, with a lot of points ultimately going over so that's our slight lean there um, but I don't know if I'm going to lay those points with, with uh, the, the Suns like maybe I'm crazy because this is such a bad Washington team but it seems like it's too many points for me because that, that Suns team again does not deserve to be that much of a favorite over anyone in my brain all right, guys, if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment 12. Let me know that you are still watching, that you're still part of the Fade Squad, not a guppy, because the guppy community is growing by the day here as we have, uh, you know, negative night after negative night. But it is all good. Like I tell you guys all the time, we can go own a million in our last million plays. We're still going to show up here. We'll still own it. You could take the picks. You can leave the picks. Again, it's just Evs. NBA picks today. I'm not saying um, the picks that you guys need to take. It's what I'm rolling with, right? We have a brand called Fade Me, so if you can't handle a loss, then you don't deserve to wear a shirt like this. But uh, we got the Blazers here taking on Golden State. This spread has jumped even since taking our screenshot here. It's actually at plus five and a half for Portland, um, which worries me a little bit because I was looking at Portland here originally because they're really good. Like I said, we talked about Luka. They are a good perimeter defense team, um, and obviously the, the Warriors definitely a perimeter-esque type team. But the fact that, you know, the books are like oh we see plus four and a half uh people are taking golden state let's jump it to five and a half it's like oh maybe the book's pretty confident in in uh the warriors here but nonetheless um if we can find this at five and a half anywhere right now i still think uh you know it's it's five and a half on DraftKings. just most books have it at four and a half so we'd want to get on this sooner rather than later i think i like that now again i hate to keep saying it but you guys know i just want to keep it honest and transparent is it a lean you know, versus a final play, maybe, because, like, it's still betting on the Blazers, uh, which could be kind of a psycho move here, right? Uh, they they didn't keep the Dallas game close yesterday. Uh, Luka did their thing, so here I am talking about their, their you know, perimeter defense, but it's like, well, is it that great? Because it's not looking all that great. Um, but again, I, I don't think that this is a spot for Golden State to necessarily dominate, um, and if they do, great. We may not touch this game altogether, but we saw Brooklyn, you know, a team that uh, is you know, way better than Portland, but still uh, a good perimeter defense team and all that type of thing. And and they kept that game close yesterday. They lose 124 to 120. Uh, both teams here now on a back-to-back. -back. I could see it being a little bit sloppy. Portland at home keeping this one close. So uh, give me Portland plus five and a half because we could still get that over on, on DraftKings. But I'm seeing some uh, uh, shift here uh, for, with half the books being four and a half and half being five and a half. Hopefully it stays around there. If it drops to five or drops back down to four and a half, then then uh, maybe we, we pass it away. But if this thing's going to move up, we may wait it out and take it. Total sitting at 233 and a half. 
I like the under here because if I think that Portland's going to keep this game close, it's not going to be an, an all-out shootout warfare type of a game, right? Like, Portland's defense is finally going to kind of step it up, which they haven't recently. I'll give you guys that, right? Last four games, 125, 132, 122, 131. Like, this isn't a game that Portland wins or even keeps close if it's a high-scoring game like that, and the under also gets blown as well. So we're hoping for, uh, you know, a little bit of a switch up in terms of what has been the trend here with our Portland plus five and a half and the under, but it is what we're rolling with in terms of a lean keep an eye on the pin comment to see our final plays guys and appreciate you tuning in uh yeah it's, it was a tough week we went from i think it was up like 13 units in the nba to down to 11 i was like all right we got this then we lose a couple in a row and and we're still positive on the year but we are absolutely gushing right now we are bleeding units but uh you know i'm confident that we will get it back but again feel free to fade any pick that we throw at you um yeah that's all i have for you guys today. i hope you guys do enjoy make sure to check out all the nfl videos we have on the channel as well and we'll catch you guys in the next one right peace out